And we're back with the breakfast and plus TV Africa time for us to talk about the elections and the behavior surrounding the election. Just a few more days before that happens. Uh, campaigns ramp up towards the forthcoming general elections and the National Peace Committee has met with some presidential candidate and other stakeholders on bridges to the peace accord signed in September 2022. However, candidates of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, and that of the Labour Party, Pitabi, did not attend the event. Atiku was represented by his running mate, Governor Ifanyo Kowa of Delta State and the chairman of the committee and former head of state, Abdus Salami Abubakar, in his speech, admonished the candidates to moderate their speech and speeches to ensure peaceful elections. Since Nigeria gained her political independence on October the 1st, 1960, Nigerians have witnessed the same pattern in political campaigns. Public uh, you know, office holders have chosen to dwell on name calling, blame game, uh, campaign of colony, and smear campaign rather than facing real issues constituting a clog in the wheel of the country's progress. Now, joining us this morning to discuss all of the developing issues is Ladipo Johnson, the spokesperson of New Nigeria People's Party. That's the NNPP. Uh, Johnson, Ladipo, it's good to have you join us. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, please. So uh, quickly, let's get to it. Do, do you think that there's any sincerity, you know, with this political gladiators towards uh, the, the peace accord and their actions, however? Well, I think there is some form of sincerity at least among some of them. Um, the, the problem with the peace accord is that, um, you know, the structure goes all the way from the national down to the wards. And most of these um, incidents, violence and what have you, you see, um, tend to come at the grassroots level or when um, they're having um, rallies or what have you but it is incumbent on the candidates themselves to ensure that, and the party, not just the candidates, the party, to ensure that they keep educating their supporters. Um, then a lot of it also has to do with the spokespersons. They tend to um, heat up the polity about, with the things they say, the antagonism amongst them. And you see, the, the, the supporters pick these things up. And whilst it might not cause problems today, it might cause problems when election results are released and announced. So yes, I think that some are sincere about it. Of course, we've had um, breaches in the agreement already. And um, that might have been one of the reasons why the second um, event took place, you know. But um, we keep working towards um, making Nigerians understand that it's meant to be for service. You're meant to be going into government to serve. But um, for some people, I believe it's, um, uh, it's a business venture. <laughs> and if, you, if you're stopping someone from being in control of trillions of naira, then he'll do, he could do anything. All right, you, interesting. Uh, Larry Paul Johnson, you, you're a legal practitioner. Yes. And um, you know better than most, you know, things that are legally binding. Um, if, if any of the candidates sign such a peace accord, um, are they <laughs> legally bound to, to ensure? Because, I mean, some say it's a waste of time. Uh, some say it's just a talk shop. There's yeah. nothing there. It's never worked, and it shouldn't really be pursued. But what do you say to this? Well, I think for what, what we have, where we are at, even if it is for the optics, it is good that we still have this because of our level of development. Um, there would be, a, it would be difficult holding a party chairman or a candidate where, you know, um, some members, and most times these people are not even members of the party, where some supporters or thugs go and cause mayhem and they're arrested. How do you make 
the party chairman, for instance, or the candidate vicariously liable for the behavior and the actions of those people. As I said, invariably, most of these people might not even be card-carrying members of the party. But for the sake, for the fact that it, we focus our attention on such things, on the fact that there's a need for, um, to guard against violence, etc., it is good. Okay. It's just because this is our level of development, unfortunately. Interesting. Uh, but, but just before you come in, still with this issue of, um, you know, issue-based campaign and then the, yes. uh, the, the legality and all that. Um, if you remember, you said, that Messi said in that intro that, you know, a couple of candidates were not there yes. the second time. Mm -hmm. The first time, some major candidates were not there. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that um, there is a political will? Um, because you talked about the... The, 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 the supporters and the part they play, the role they play. But the fact, you know, from what we see, you know, playing out in recent Nigerian political history, is the rhetoric uh, of the candidates is in the political rhetoric is quite, 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 uh, uh, and it's not, nothing to write home about. You know, some of the things they say, um, we've heard some people say elections do or die affair, <laughs> you know, and all. I'm not talking about the ones that are fake news. So, um, as far as you're concerned, um, is there a political, is there a will, a willingness by the candidates to tone down uh, their you know, violent rhetoric and some of the things they say, you know, it's a do or die affair, I'm ready to get dirty. You go to even the states, you know, the governorship candidates, the things they say. There's one popular governor who, we you know, has been, you know, saying a lot of things that can move people to violence. Yes, unfortunately, unfortunately, um, <clears throat> Amongst some of them, there's a will to be decent, to follow um, proper behavior, and to stick to the guidelines. But there are some, unfortunately, who believe it is a do or die affair. As I say, or as I said earlier, some people believe that it is a business venture. And as long as they believe that, they will do anything they can do, including resorting to violence, attacking um, opposition members and members of other parties. They'll do all those things. So it, it will take time. And you see, if there is no enforcement, if we do not call them out, it will continue. But you see, let us um, say this. I think that this election, or these elections, are slightly different. We've had, for one reason or the other, and I thank God for it, we've had people become more interested. And when, if we can get a large turnout of voters, then it will be more difficult to rig, and it will be more difficult for people to carry out violent acts. You see, the way they operate is this. They have groups of um, touts or whatever. They cannot go everywhere. They probably target one or two places, depending where they feel their candidate is losing, or where they feel their candidate is um, weaker. They try to target those areas. They try to target collation centers. Now you have a machine that is transmitting electronically. So gradually these things will begin to reduce. And they will see that um, it will be game over. Maybe within two, three electoral cycles. Okay, so, so, but, 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 but I know that uh, you know, it won't be wrong for us to have this conversation now. And it's not too early yes. to have the conversation as to how do we now, you know, encourage the culture of uh, not a do or die affair? Because that would also trickle down to um, what we say to the electorates, what, you know, the political class or yeah. the gladiators begin to chunk out as a word of words and their actions because they also look at them and emulate. So what's, what kind of behaviors? Do we need policies? Um, what do we really need to put in place, you know, to, no, um, to, to get to that point? I think the policies are there. And maybe, yes, you could put in more policies. But the bottom line is the people. It is the people 
that will set that agenda. When a spokesperson comes in, calls this person a bastard, does this, does that, you will find, if he finds, or he or she finds, that the reaction of the voters is negative to his way of speaking, of attacking opponents, he'll tone things down. What, what, what can the media do in, in this instance? What the media should do is to make sure that, one, everyone has access. Everyone has access. You'll be damned if the people who are the perpetrators of the violence are the people who control the funds or the people in power. Then it becomes more difficult because, you know, media, media houses are also commercial houses. But if others do not have access, either because of funds or whatever, to these commercial houses, to talk about the other side, then, you know, that's one. And the media should also call out um, any such incidents. All right. Yeah, it, it, it'll be, um, I don't know, um, I mean, we have you here. You yes. Know, let's say from horse's mouth, the horse is here. So before you go, you're the spokesman for the NNPP presidential candidate. Yes. Um, how is he doing? How the campaign is going? But importantly, there was this talk of, of, of Rabi Musa Kwankwa, so engineer Rabi Musa Kwankwa, <laughs> so, uh, stepping down for some, some kind of time. Okay, let me just say quickly, for the umpteenth time, Rabi Kwankwazo is not stepping down. He is contesting this election till the 25th of February. If there's a runoff after that, and he comes in first or second, he's part of the runoff, we will contest it. Uh, he said no, he, he yes. said no, no need for a merger? There is no, look, the time has gone for a merger. I mean, we still the, have some time. No, 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 no. The, when we say merger, in the sense that um, the time for a merger by proper, INEC proper merger, yeah. is gone. But, 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 but when you talk about cooperation, the time is still there. It could happen anytime. Coalition coming, maybe. Yeah. But, as I said, we do not intend to. Mm. We have not. The only time we sat down was when we were approached by the Labour Party. They approached us. It didn't work out. And he's been working. His way of campaigning has been totally different. We only just started um, rallies recently. He's been working at the grassroots. He's been to well over 400 local governments. Okay. So he has no need. But, but we have to go now. Yes. And uh, one would begin to think that if he's not going to step down, then there might just be some form of cooperation. That doesn't need any legal... We're willing, yeah, we're willing so to so have someone cooperate with us. We don't, we don't. <laughs> well, we have to cooperate with someone. Uh, we have to go. Uh, thank you thank so much. You. I mean, Ladipo Johnson, it's been great speaking with you. But we have been about the issue of our elections and, uh, you know, the kind of politics that we practice. Uh, some people would describe it as the Machiavellian kind of politics. And we want to ask yourself what that is. It's just, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how you get it, but as long as you get it. And that's also a reflection of what you believe. You begin to become what you believe. Uh, let's do better. Let the campaigns be issue-based. That's what we're asking. Uh, there are several issues that uh, we're bothered with as a country. I mean, a lot of issues that we're facing. Let's, you know, pay attention to those issues and let's not begin to engage in, you know, violence and name-calling and all sorts. That's it this morning on the show. If you miss out on any part of the conversation, it'll be great for you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Boko. And my name is Kofi Bartels. Um, we'll be back tomorrow, same time on the program, and have yourself a lovely day.